All right, let's let's try this one more time here, shall we? Okay, I realize I'm a little overbearing right now. Check, check. All right, we're back. So, my complete new move. I screwed up. I I forgot to route the audio back where it was where it was supposed to be. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is today, 4/14/2020. The president's coming up. He's announcing that he has some airline deals to keep the paycheck protection program going on to keep the airlines in business. The president came up within the past five minutes as I was screwing up this broadcast, but continue, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Please. You're welcome. Very importantly, I'd like to begin by saying that we've just reached agreement. The Secretary of Treasury, Steve Mnuchin, uh, with the major airlines, all of our great airlines, to participate in a payroll support program. This agreement will fully support airline industry workers, preserve the vital role airlines play in our economy, and protect taxpayers. Our airlines are now in good shape, and uh, they will get over a very tough period of time that was not caused by them. The United States is continuing to make substantial progress in our war against the virus. We grieve at every precious life that has been lost to the invisible enemy. But through the darkness, we can see the rays of light. We see that tunnel. And at the end of that tunnel, we see light. We're starting to see it more than ever before. We've held well, our rate, the numbers, the, everything we've done. We've been very, very strong on it and very powerful on it. Uh, you look at what's happening in other countries, Spain, Italy, United Kingdom, we're working with them. We're trying to help them, especially with ventilators. They've been calling a lot. They need ventilators so badly. Fifteen percent of counties within the United States have zero cases, and many counties within the United States have a very small number of cases. Large sections of our country are really looking at other sections and saying, wow, that looks bad, but they don't have the problem. I salute the American people for following our guidelines on social distancing. Even you people, it's so different looking out there when I look at you. Uh, their devotion, your devotion, is saving lives. Today, I'm instructing my administration to halt funding of the World Health Organization while a review is conducted to assess the World Health Organization's role in no. severely mismanaging and covering up the spread of the coronavirus. Cover up. Ooh. Everybody knows what's going on there. American Are taxpayers we? provide between $400 million and $500 million per year to the WHO. In contrast, China contributes roughly $40 million a year and even less. As the organization's leading sponsor, the United States has a duty to insist on full accountability, one of the most dangerous the, the and costly decisions from the WHO was its disastrous decision to oppose travel restrictions from China and other nations. They were very much opposed to what we did. Fortunately, I was not convinced and suspended travel from China, saving untold well, numbers of lives. Thousands pandemic. and thousands of people would have died. Had other nations likewise suspended travel from China, countless more lives would have been saved. Instead, look at the rest of the world, look at parts of Europe, other nations and regions who followed WHO guidelines and kept their borders open to China, accelerated the pandemic all around the world. Many countries said, we're going to listen to the WHO, and they have problems the likes of which they cannot believe. Or, or when asked about Nobody certain can policies, believe. The decision they, of other major countries Skype. to keep travel open was one of the great tragedies and missed opportunities from the early days. The WHO's attack on travel restrictions put political correctness above life-saving measures. Travel bans work for the same reason that quarantines work. Pandemics depend on human-to-human -human transmission. Border control is fundamental to virus control. 
Since its establishment in 1948, the American people have generously supported the World Health Organization to provide better health outcomes for the world and, most importantly, to help prevent global health crises. With the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have deep concerns whether America's generosity has been put to the best use possible. The reality is that the WHO failed to adequately obtain vet and share information in a timely and transparent were you afraid, fashion. Were they afraid of calling a pandemic because the world depends on the WHO to work with countries to or? ensure that accurate information about international health threats is shared in a timely manner. And if it's not, to independently tell the world the truth about what is happening. The WHO failed in this basic You're duty not what the hell's the point. and must be held accountable. It's time after all of these decades. The WHO failed to investigate credible reports from sources in Wuhan that conflicted directly with the Chinese government's official accounts. As far as remarks, CDC there was credible information in. to suspect human to human transmission in December 2019, which should have spurred the WHO to investigate and investigate immediately. Through the middle of January, it parroted and publicly endorsed the idea that there was not human-to-human -human transmission happening despite reports and clear evidence to the contrary. Mm, people on the internet the delays knew about all this the in WHO January. experience right mid to early January. In declaring a public health a emergency later. cost valuable time tremendous amounts of time. More time was lost in the delay it took to get a team of international experts in to examine the outbreak, which we wanted to do, which they should have done. The inability of the WHO to obtain virus samples to this date has deprived the scientific what? community of essential data. We, we, we have samples. New data I'm not sure what that, that is. emerges across the world on a daily basis, points to the unreliability of the initial reports. And the world received all sorts of false information about transmission and mortality. The silence of the WHO on the disappearance of scientific researchers and doctors and on new restrictions on the sharing of research into the origins of COVID-19 in the country of origin of people. is deeply concerning, especially when we put up by far the largest amount of money. Not even close. Had the WHO done its job to get medical experts into China to objectively assess the situation on the ground and to call out China's lack of transparency, the outbreak could have been contained at its source with very little death, very little death, and certainly very little death by comparison. This would have saved thousands of lives and avoided worldwide economic damage. Instead, the WHO willingly took China's assurances to face value, and they took it just at face value and defended well, the actions trust, of the Chinese government, verify. even praising China for its so-called transparency. I don't think so. The WHO pushed China's misinformation about the virus, saying it was not communicable and there was no need for travel bans. What, they told us when we put on our Taiwan travel ban, a very strong travel ban. There was something? no need to do it. Don't do it. They actually fought us. The WHO's reliance on China's disclosures likely caused a 20-fold increase in cases worldwide, and it may be much more than that. The WHO has not addressed a single one of these concerns, nor provided a serious explanation that acknowledges its own mistakes, of which there were many. America and the world have chosen to rely on the WHO for accurate, timely, and independent information to make important public health recommendations and decisions. If we cannot trust that, this is what we will receive from the WHO. Our country will be forced to find other ways to work with other nations to achieve public health goals. We'll have no choice but to do that. He's essentially ending Our the countries are now experiencing, you look all over the world, 
tremendous death and economic devastation because those tasked with protecting us by being truthful and transparent failed to do so. It would have been so easy to be truthful. Did they? No. And so much death has been caused by their mistakes. They didn't. Why didn't they? We will continue to engage with the WHO to see if it can make meaningful reforms. For the time being, we will redirect global health and directly work with others. All of the aid that we send will be discussed at very, very powerful letters and and with very powerful and influential groups and smart groups, medically, politically, and every other way. And we'll be discussing it with other countries and global health partners. What we do with all of that money that goes to WHO. And maybe WHO half, will half reform, and maybe they won't. But we'll be able to see, as you know, in other countries hit hard by the virus, hospitals have been tragically forced to ration medical care and the use of ventilators. I really hope this wasn't but because of lazy bureaucrats. And aggressive action, if it was because of the lazy skill of our health care workers and the resilience of our health care system. No hospital in America has been forced to deny any patient access to a ventilator with all of the talk you've heard where some states wanted 40,000 ventilators. I said, that doesn't work. 40, well, they were scared. And they ended up with their leaders of their states. They seven or 8,000. Of course, you're going to ask for more than and the maximum you might need. They had no need. problem. 40,000 ventilators you hope for, the best, for one state. But you planned for the worst. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Did, the scariest no, it's not. day of my life was about a month ago when, after a long day of meetings, my team told me that we were going to be needing 130,000 ventilators that we were short hundreds of thousands of ventilators. This is the system we inherited. I had governors requesting unreasonable sums that the federal government just didn't have. And you look at the states. The states didn't have. The states were not prepared. I knew that every person who needed a ventilator and didn't get one would die. And that's what we were told. They would die. I saw in other countries, doctors having to make decisions on who got a ventilator and who didn't. And I knew that this would be a defining challenge of the crisis. Die. Those that didn't get ventilators were said to be in a position only of one alternative, and that was death. Would we be able to prevent Americans from dying because we couldn't get them ventilators and the ventilators that they needed, and they needed immediately? I instructed my team to move heaven and earth to make sure that this didn't happen. We started to smartly ration and distribute the ventilators that we had and that others had. There were reports of lack of ventilators. And I got daily updates on the supply we had. From Mid, late January. From requests coming in and people wanting to have updates. We had a great group of people working on it. I instructed my team to use the Defense Protection Act. And the Defense Production Act was used very powerfully, more powerfully than anybody would know. In fact, so powerfully that, for the most part, we didn't have to officially take it out. It was a hammer. It was a very powerful hammer in order to manufacture as many ventilators as possible. But Last there. year, America manufactured from a dead start 30,000 ventilators. And this year, the number will be over 150,000 ventilators. It could be as high as 200,000, far more than we'll ever need. So we'll be able to stockpile. We'll be able to talk to states about stockpiling. These are high-quality ventilators. We had a choice. We could do inexpensive, uh, less productive ventilators or high quality. We've done a high quality ventilator. So we should have anywhere from 150 to 200,000 ventilators. In addition to that, we have 10,000 ventilators right now in the federal stockpile ready to move. Should we need them? We might not. Should we need them in New York 
or New Jersey or in Louisiana, in Louisiana California, Massachusetts, or in Illinois anywhere. or any other state that may need them if we have a surge. I'd like to ask Adam Bowler to come up and just say a few words. He's done a fantastic job, a young man who worked 24 hours a day on handling this situation. And I'd just like to have, have Adam, wherever he may be, come up and say a few words. Adam, please. Thank you very much. All right. Well, well, we'll stop it right there. So just to reiterate and recap what the president just uh, was going over, apparently uh, the United States is suspending all money going to the WHO. That's the World Health Organization. Uh, the president is saying that basically they dropped the ball on this situation here. He believes they were pretty much He's basically saying they were kowtowing to China. Now, the level of accuracy of that, I've seen mixed reports as well. Did they know? Did they have additional information? I've seen some concerning things. And here's the thing. If if people were playing politics and they didn't want to say, well, this is a big issue, that sounds freaking criminal to me. Now, if they were simply inept or just didn't necessarily know what they were dealing with, that could be another thing. My next question would be, well, why didn't they necessarily know about this? Because you really shouldn't need people like me that are more or less just internet trolls to be talking about this. I interviewed a young Filipina lady who was living in Hong Kong at the time when this was really starting to get big down there. And that was like almost two months ago. That was like February, I think, 16th, 18th, something like that. Uh, and she was telling me that like basically everyone went out, you had multiple layers, you had a mask or two masks or anything. They had an extremely strong response to it. And if anybody in an apartment building was infected, according to her, they were basically quarantining everybody in that apartment building for two weeks. So it's like, this information was out there. How was it not going to the sources? Was it not properly vetted? Again, I'm just going based upon what people were telling me. Maybe they were being told different things. I don't know. But again, the president is suspending uh, all fun United States funds to the WHO, which that kind of ends the WHO. I mean, at least in its, in its current form. Um, I mean, is this a smart thing to do during a pandemic? I mean, is this something we should wait on? Or is this just a, a strong response to show that we ain't going to take this? I have no idea. It's up for you all to decide. So, hey, thank you all for watching. Peace out. And long live the elbow bump.